So this is our haunted house that we're building right now. Uh, we don't have uh, any specific sort of lore. We're just using Willow Creek because it kind of makes me think of the goth household with the, with the kind of house that I had in mind. Um, so we can come in here and see that we've got this like grand entrance and this grand staircase. Um, if you go here, this is um, a little sort of water closet that you can use. Very simple. This room is not decorated yet, but this is kind of like the main living room. I've just kind of thrown some items down like this creepy looking dog. Um, but we haven't actually furnished it yet, really. I guess I put curtains up for some reason. <laughs> That's the last thing I do. Um, and then on this side, we've got our dining room, which is not decorated, but there is a dining table. Uh, you're in the middle of 100 Baby when you came into the stream. Okay. Yeah, I vaguely remember Scotty being around for one of the compound builds. So I think that was like a little bit in when we were eventually able to move in there. So, but yeah, there's some uh, early pieces where we begin building sort of Portia's story a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I think it really started getting wild when we moved to the compound. And I think a lot of you, that was around when it started. Oh, I see. I left the treats on here and she's coming trying to get them. I can't believe it's been almost a year since Scotty came into the stream. It has been. Yeah, it was right around this time last year. So yeah, I've been streaming for about a year now because he came in fairly soon after I started streaming. So yeah, November 21st. Really, you remember, wow. November 21st, yeah, that would make sense. I think I started around October, like around this time last, last year. And then I was only doing one stream a week and it was mostly for family. Okay, so upstairs we've got four rooms. So this room, I guess, will be the bathroom. Um, and then I think this was the uh, main primary bedroom. Oh my gosh, she's literally stealing the treats. <laughs> she pulled the whole packet of treats into her mouth and she was, she was running away with them. <laughs> she's so cute. I almost let her take him because she's so cute, but she shouldn't have all of those. She'll vomit. <laughs> November 12th and you never left. No, and I'm so glad that you're here still. Uh, but yeah, 100 Baby is kind of like our OG. And the only reason we stopped playing it is because something went wrong in the toddler bunker. Right, so this was the, for sure it's definitely one of the more haunted rooms was this like baby's nursery. Um, we've got these like floating heads um, and a floating horse and carriage. We've got some goo, some candles. I think they tried to do something, maybe some cards. They're definitely trying to get rid of the hauntedness in this room. Um, and then we did also a kid's room over here because for whatever reason, kids are creepier. <laughs> kids are always creepier than adults. So yeah, there's definitely a ghost child playing with their dolls, little Victorian dollhouse. So that's as far as we got. Um, I think I have turned off some of the content. Uh, so we'll take off custom content, but we'll turn on live edit and debug. And then we had specific packs we were using. So we were using base game. And then we we're using all of these supernatural packs. Shark Respector, hello, welcome in. What will happen if a bucket of water is thrown on you? Um, I don't know, it will be, it will be unpleasant. <laughs> Same, yeah, that's when you came in too, Omega Girl. Uh, Omega girl, what am I talking about? That's when you came into Omega, that is true. Uh, but welcome in Shark Respector, welcome, welcome. You get wet? Oh, yeah, that would happen. <laughs> I was just thinking about my feelings. Okay, so we've got Werewolves, Realm of Magic, and Vampires, and then in here, we're using spooky stuff, and what did we do, paranormal? There was one other pack that we ended up using in here. Fitness, bowling night, vintage kids room, romantic garden, cool kitchen. I don't remember what the other pack was. Oh, it was nifty knitting, I think. I'm pretty sure. Realm of magic vampires, yes. 
Uh, werewolves. Yes. Yeah, we've got all these super, super natural ones. Um, but I'm pretty sure that we had nifty knitting maybe. Yeah, for the rocking chair. Right, we had gotten nifty knitting because we wanted the rocking chair. I remember now. Okay. So, hmm. I do think that if we go back to this dining room, it's almost done, but I do think that it needs some like art and then we need some cobwebs and stuff. We've only done cobwebs so far and like these holes and stuff in the kitchen. So I think we kind of need to make this room a little bit gross. Uh, rough it up a bit. Uh, okay. Not entirely sure what this is, but that up there. Um, uh, so, uh, Oh, that makes the, <laughs> that makes the wooden slats look bigger, which is not what we want, I don't think. I'm not too sure what these holes are exactly. But yeah, we definitely want to make it look icky, icky, sticky. I'm not excited to go back to work tomorrow. I've enjoyed having my time off. I kind of was like, not sure what to do with myself at first. Cause say I, I haven't had really that much time off. I did have, I had some time off in July, I guess. But I think so much happened during that week. That was when my sister had her car accident um, and I got this house and everything. So I feel like I wasn't really able to appreciate that time off at all. I know that there's a little spider that does come out on uh, on some of the cobwebs. Maybe we should do it so like, oh, we don't go into the creepy dungeon door. Um, some ratty old spots on here. Oh, that's not even the wall. See, so these cracks I think are more supposed to be like stone. We don't really have stone until you get here. You put cracks in there. Are you still going to be working from home in your new job? Yeah, so I was talking to my manager. I was then asking him about that because like with Mowgli and stuff, I just need to know if I like, uh, if I need to worry about like changing what time I give him his insulin ad and stuff to accommodate if like, if we're working from the office because right now I give it to him at 9.30 every day. Um, both in the morning and at nighttime. So, uh, so I can change the time I give it to him. Like if, if we need to be in the office, I don't usually, I usually start working at 8 a.m. I don't work like that late. Um, 
And so anyways, from what he said, I think that they're similar, that they haven't been mandated back yet. So with government, like some departments have been mandated and are required to, um, to be in the office for a certain amount of time. Now, the way that it works because we're doing hoteling um, is nobody is, um, nobody can go back to work 100%. So no matter what, even if they mandate us back to work, which they likely, I think, will do personally, I personally think that, um, uh, it won't be full time. So it's just like, whether it's like two days a week, three days a week kind of thing. So I do think it's coming, but no, they, they haven't been requiring people in. I don't know though if they're even like, what our team has been doing is we've been asked to try and take advantage of the hoteling and try to make it work for our teams. Um, so we've been going in like once every few weeks basically. And we know the days that we go in that they're not gonna be productive days in the office. Uh, lo loving the house and all the little details. Thank you, lady. Yes, we're trying to make it look as run down and disheveled as possible. I'm pretty sure I've got some stains for the floor as well, but I don't know where those are. Oh, we could just like put a bit of garlic. Just um, put a couple of pieces of garlic up here. Just <laughs> uh, no vampires allowed. So, so yeah, uh, I think what he was saying is they're, they're pretty flexible right now and they don't have any like requirements to go in, but it does seem like I think they're going in maybe a little bit more often than we were. So you should see your abandoned trash home. Ooh, that sounds cool. <laughs> I'd love to make a junkyard still one day. That's one thing that I haven't really tried to do and I think that would be fun to have like a junkyard I think there's some like is it Batu maybe that has water stains I think there's water stains somewhere oh I didn't realize these come in different colors I might just put some cracks in this room maybe I'll put another one of these Oh, these do just like hang in the middle of the room. Oh, I see. Okay, I see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That wasn't really an answer, was it? <laughs> it's nice. It's trashed. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Okay, I think we've trashed like these three rooms now or four rooms. It's just this room that's left. So, but we should probably first figure out exactly what we're putting in it. Now we do have this giant organ, which if I could, I would try to make it play by itself because obviously that would be very creepy. I think I'll try to put it in the corner of the room. Maybe like here. So I know the organ comes with a vampire's pack. Let's do that. Um, now we've got our ghost dog. I think I might get rid of this squirrel. I don't know why I put that there. Uh, but maybe we could put that on there. Um, and then we need some antique, preferably rundown looking couches. Hello, Brianna Peppers. How are you doing today? Welcome in. Uh, you used a lot of stuff from Eco for outside. Ooh, that would be a good one. That would be a good one for trash. I think if we were ever to do like a, um, a junkyard, Eco would be a good choice. Okay, so we've got like, I think this kind of a couch. So we are building a haunted house right now. We did start by playing Resident Evil. It did not go well. I basically could not win that game. <laughs> um, but we had voted to try sort of like a scarier game. Uh, we played a demo and we ran out of time with the demo before I was actually able to make any meaningful progress. So uh, so anyways, we tried it. We tried it. And, um, and now we switched over. We voted and we switched over to some Sims 4. Continuing our haunted house build from Monday. Um, so that's what we were working in. 
working on. Yes, we are making a haunted house. Um, and it's going better definitely than Resident Evil was going, that's for sure. I was not doing well there. Doesn't that look like a, a ghost dog? I think it does. Oh, yes. See, there's some floor cracks and floor scratches. Ooh, maybe we should put some by this door. As if they were like trying to get out. Like an animal trying to get out the door. <laughs> yes, that's what I like to see. There we go. Uh, yay for haunted house. I can barely handle TWD so you don't do scary stuff. <laughs> it wasn't really. I think the scariest part was before any of the scare, like scary things happened. Because uh, it was like the anticipation. I was waiting for something. Like I was waiting for something to come out and grab me or try to scare me. So when it finally did, I was almost like relieved. Like when I, I found something scary. I definitely like was jumping at busts and at door doors shutting and stuff like that beforehand. Um, and then, yeah, when when we finally did actually encounter something that was actually scary, I was like, oh, thank God. Like <laughs> we've been sneaking around this creepy mansion for so long, like waiting for this to happen. So, yeah, when it finally did, I was like, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I was ready for it. Uh, no worries. Thank you so much for the lurk. And if you do have a nap, I hope that you enjoy it. So, but yeah, we are, we're just going to do a little bit of building to decompress. Um, I took some gravel because I actually also got quite motion sick. <laughs> I got motion sickness from playing that game as well. So I might not be able to stream for too, too long because it does make me groggy. So we'll see. We'll see how long we can last. But yeah. That was... Uh, <laughs> it was definitely fun to try something different. But I can't say that I, I was good at it. <laughs> I can't say that I succeeded. <laughs> For sure. Is there some like dead sticks or something? I feel like the vase is too nice. Uh, I love you guys. I love you too, Stranger. And thank you so much as well for the raid. You came in right at the end of that. <laughs> where uh, you saw me die. <laughs> and then give up. Well, not give up. I ran out of time on the demo. I don't think I will be buying it. Because I feel like it would be very boring for people to watch me fail. Although I would probably figure it out if I, if I spent longer on it. I wish that there was some like dead, um, studio. Hello. Welcome in. And oh my gosh, thank you so much for the gifted subs, uh, for the gifted sub to Jude. Did you get, you gifted 11? Thank you so, so much. Can we get some hype please for Hudio? And how are you doing today? I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for the gifts. That's very, very generous. It is so generous. Um, to be gifted a sub. Um, and I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that uh, all the recipients enjoy. I think you would have done amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, maybe eventually if I gave it a little bit more of a chance. Um, but in one day, it was definitely tricky. Thank you so much for the hype as well. For Hudio. thank you so much. That was very, very sweet of you. So we do have a little graveyard on the side of our haunted house here um, that I built. Um, and I am putting a couple of mounds in. I think it would be fun if there was a way that I could like make it so it was actually dug. But I don't know if I can do that. Could I maybe do that if I did like a basement? Wait, let's see if I can do this. I might be able to do it actually. Mm 
Nothing to delete. Okay. So that doesn't work. I feel like there's gotta be a way that I can, oh wait, isn't there, can't I do like shovel tool? There's a, there is a bone in the jungle adventure pack. Oh, oh my gosh, do we, wait, do I increase the number of packs I'm using? I did originally say that I wanted to like, um, keep it like, limit my packs, but I kind of want a bone. I do want a bone. That is something that I want <laughs> for this. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we've got like a little hole. <laughs> um, Maybe I will get rid of that one because it kind of looks like this is the earth from that hole and then maybe I can just do this. Um, and wait, let's, let's make this smaller. Okay, this is good. And then I can just, whoop, whoop. yeah. Oh, that's way too much. Can you just be a little bit less aggressive, please? Thank you. Yeah, that's what I want. Perfect. I think I need the bone. I think you can dig a hole with train tools. Yes, I just did. Perfect, perfect. I think they might be in the debug part of Jungle Adventure. That looks so cool. Thanks, lady. I'm glad you like it. Uh, Yeah, these are the vibes we're going for. Um, it's easier to see if you get rid of the grid. Okay. Um, I think it looks pretty good though. I think this is fine. You get the, you get the vibes that we're going for. You're picking up what we're putting down, I think. Um, oh, we could put some flowers in front of one of them. You put some flowers in front of that one. Oh, they're floating. Never mind. Never mind. Maybe I'll put it next to. Oh, actually, so I one of the I did two fun things this weekend or this past week. Um, it was a skull with bones. Uh, okay, I'll take I'll take a look in a second. There is it the cypress tree. Now there's a certain type of tree that people plant. It, I think it might be this tree. So apparently. There's a lot of, uh, I was learning, I went on a um, haunted walk. My city does a lot of haunted walk. And I did one in um, Ottawa. Cypress tree. I think it's the cypress tree actually. Um, and so yeah, there's a lot of like forgotten um, graveyards all over the city. And apparently one of the ways that they identify um, where graveyards might have been is because it's very n normal for people and it goes back to ancient Greece and it's across multiple different cultures to plant these like, I think it's cypress trees on either side of the gravestone. And so I had never noticed this graveyard, which is a really nice graveyard and a lot of famous people are buried in it. So I actually do um, walk in this graveyard quite a bit. It's not too far from where I live. Um, but I had never done any of their tours before. And, um, and they were saying that they often will locate graves because they'll see like clusters of cypress trees like this, because normally they're buried one on each side of a grave. And there was a ton of, uh, gravestones that did have these trees on either side of them. And this is a practice that spans back to ancient Greece. So all over the world, when they find like clusters of these trees like this, they figure that there probably at some point was a graveyard there. So, um, so yeah, and we, it was really cool. We learned a lot of the history of some graveyards that had been lost in my city. Uh, I never knew that. I didn't know that either. And like, I never noticed. Like Now, I, then I, when they said that, I started looking and I noticed it everywhere. Oh, did I use the tool again? Okay. 
Um, let me switch, go back to the pack. Uh, vampires, werewolves, realm of magic. We had also spooky stuff and nifty knitting and paranormal. Um, yeah, so, but also like there's a few, there's a lot of very interesting. <sighs> do I believe in ghosts? Yes, I do. I, I definitely do. <laughs> in my family, we believe in ghosts. You do 100% as well, Lady Raven. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, okay, so if we do jungle adventure, let's see. Can I find, let's see, if I search for bone, can I find anything? We definitely have debug on, so hopefully it will bring up debug items if we search. Fish bone. Thank goodness. Wait, can I? <laughs> oh. Yes. <sighs> this is what I need. Okay, we'll just leave that there. That's perfect. Yay, you found it. Yes, thank you for that. Okay, so we're adding Jungle Adventures to the pack because we need the bones. Uh, we definitely need the bones. Oh, there's also a bone wand. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to put that up here. There we go. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so there was a few interesting things that we learned. Um, but the other thing that was interesting that we learned is that... Um, in like the mid 1800s, uh, it was uh, medicine. Medicine students had to provide their own cadavers to study medicine. So you could um, go to medical school, but you had to you had to find your own bodies to study medicine on in Canada. And you were, there was no way to legally obtain a body. <laughs> so if you wanted to go to medical school, you needed to, to find like bodies that you could use. And, and there was no le possible legal way to obtain them which I didn't know was part of like our Canadian history. So because of this, there was a booming grave robbing industry. And the cost to purchase a body from a grave robber was $50 a body. And apparently a house in those days cost about three, like a regular size, medium, multi-medium size house cost about $300. So it was like the cost of, was that a fifth or a sixth of a house? Uh, grave, you did know that grave digging was very common because of that. I didn't know that. I had no idea. I had heard of grave robbers and I thought that they robbed for like valuables that people might have been buried with. I didn't realize that they were actually uh, looking for, for bodies <laughs> and that the reason for that was because Medical students needed them to be able to go to school. This was very interesting to me. I love that they they were like, yeah, like provide your own bodies, but there's no legal way to do this. So like that is so weird to me. I just can't believe that that was a thing, but it was. And uh, they did end up, Atakai, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome in. Please feel free to correct me if I pronounced your name wrong. Um. Uh, don't be shy, but welcome. We are building a haunted house today. And obviously we're talking about um, scary topics. So, but yeah, that was something that I learned, which was really interesting. Uh, but you already knew that, Omega. I didn't. 
Uh, they did eventually pass legislation in Canada so that um, there were ways for medical students to obtain cadavers for school, and which then caused the industry to decline uh, because there weren't people looking for for that anymore. But I found that very interesting. Um, there's a very common serial murder case based on this. Two guys murdered a bunch of people to sell the bodies to a teaching doctor. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Wow. <laughs> interesting. Very... This was something I was not aware of. I'm glad I know it now though. What are these? Tool headphones. That's cool. Um, I'll put this like gramophone looking item because obviously you need to have some electronics that turn on on their own in a haunted house. Um, I feel like that's just a part of the experience. It wasn't just Canada either. Oh, see, I didn't want to assume that it was the same, but I wouldn't be surprised if in other places that was also a thing. But um, yeah, I I mean, I only heard about specifically in Canada, so. Is this the kind of house to have a coat of arms? I'm not really sure. Coat of arms are very scary though. So maybe I'll just put one at the end of this hallway. And then we've got a telescope there. Not very common, very famous. Okay, okay, I see. Um, but yeah, that's all very interesting to me. Oh yeah, the stolen necklace. Bust of a Baron. Princess Cordelia bust. Man, okay, so I have learned that busts are scary given how much they scared me in the last game that we just played. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss a few busts in here. Having a bust is upsetting. Busts are upsetting. So I will put them in here. Uh, this looks like it could have been a plant that died. So we should put one of these in the house too. Maybe we'll put it there. I only want dead plants. No alive plants, please. Uh, statue of Horus. A gentleman named Claude René Duplantier Guidry, Guidry acquired this falcon statue during his world adventures years ago. Said to be a symbol of power and healing, those closest to Guidry said he kept the statue close to him even during his final days. Okay, so is this something that's supposed to help in a haunted environment? Coat of arms are scary. Yes, they're scary too. That's why I put one in. Even though I don't necessarily get coat of arms vibes from this house, um, they are creepy, <laughs> especially if they like turn their heads and stuff. So, uh, what is this? Clay hands. They appear in the ground. All right, let's throw some clay hands down here for sure. Is there a creepier color? Black is creepy. And then maybe a brown one. Uh, winged llama of death? <gasps> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to put a winged llama of death in the gardens. We should have a bunch of statues in the gardens for sure, I think. But we'll do like a silvery color. Uh, we'll definitely make the gardens a little bit nicer at some point, but... Just put these out here for now. Year of the pig statuette. Uh, womanikin. <gasps> Wait, this is scary too. There's absolutely no reason to have this, but it's terrifying. So we need it. I'll put it up here. I'm gonna put some um, tables down. We should probably just have some knives also in the kitchen. 
There, you can you can defend yourself with those if need be. Not that ghosts, not that knives help you in a situation with ghosts, but probably gonna be helpful. I would imagine, what is this? This feels like a garden item as well. What is it? Garden statue? Yeah. Landmark. What are these? Debris. Whoa. Oh, this is something in the sky. Oh, I see. It's like floating debris. Whoa, that's cool. That's a debug item for sure. Oh, wow. I like it. It's cool. Okay. Um, solar system trophy, Astro Bunny. Trophy, artist supply table, statue of some dude, our founder, ballerina. Ooh, I want to make this a really small and put it in um, the girl's room. There. Uh, level nine of the painter career. Freezer bunny award. Okay. All right. I think that's everything that we need from here. Let's grab some tables for our busts. Uh, what is the most janky looking table? I think I'll put one of these under here. Under here, maybe. Yeah. There we go. That's good. Um, and then I just need some kind of like a pedestal or something. Or a janky table of some kind. This one looks a bit janky. Oh no, it looks pretty fancy actually. Okay, let's just get this one again. Uh, let's put our bust on that one. Um, put one here, I guess, maybe, or here, or maybe we put it downstairs. Not too sure where to put this. Uh, I feel like hallways is the place for a bus. Uh, Kitty, Moe's words of the day, janky. <laughs> is that not a common word? I feel like people say janky all the time. Okay, I'm going to put that bust on there, maybe. This should not exist. I'm going to put it in the bathroom. Um, and then perhaps this bust can go here. There we go. Perfect. This feels like it is exactly as it should be. Okay. Uh, let's think about this bathroom now. Oh, sorry. Did you hear my knuckles crack? Wow, that was really loud. <laughs> okay. This is a good toilet, I think. There. Um, maybe I'll just put this bathtub outside. I think I will make the bathroom functional because I do want people to be able to play in this if they choose to. Maybe, maybe I won't do that. We did that one downstairs. Let's do this toilet. I think that's a good color. Wooden toilet seats are terrifying because I just feel like germs will sink into the wood and it would be really hard to clean. You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't believe that wooden toilet seats should exist. We did have a wooden toilet seat growing up. <gasps> I remember it very well. It was definitely before I understood how like cleanliness worked. 
in those days. I didn't realize that that was incredibly unsanitary and nasty, potentially. Um, <laughs> good times. Good times. Uh... There, we'll put a nice, beautiful sink. Um, our, our weird bathroom bus can watch you as you shower. I'm gonna turn it a little bit towards the shower, I think. I feel like that's inappropriate, which is how it should be. <laughs> also, splinters, true. That is not an area that you want to acquire a splinter, I don't think. Splinters are unpleasant enough as it is, but acquiring them as you are trying to do your business on the toilet is especially cruel. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that one. Hmm. That's the exact same one we use downstairs, isn't it? Also, I'm pretty sure they did used to have hardwood floors and bathrooms at one time. I remember when we went to Grand Manan Island, staying in a home that had hardwood floors in the bathroom and it had a clawfoot tub like this. It was like an old house and the floors were hardwood. And I remember thinking that was so strange, um, but also beautiful. Like it was very beautiful, the floors. So I do think there's a possibility that this house would have hardwood floors in the bathroom, but um, we're not going to, we're not going to tempt fate. We're going to put electrical lights in the bedroom because that is scary, I think. Yeah, okay, like, I feel like I like this color best, although I think that we might put the dark color in this bedroom. Yeah, we need electric lights so that they can flicker and all that, you know? Um, and then we need some candles or something for this bathroom. Or maybe we'll put electric lights in here as well. Yeah, let's put these up here. Um, hardwood floors and fuzzy toilet seat covers. Yeah, who thought of the fuzzy toilet seat covers? That one is another decision that I just simply do not understand. <laughs> Also very unhygienic. Like imagine somebody pees on your fizzy toilet seat cover. I guess you could pull it off and throw it in the wash. But what if you don't know and you sit down on a damp toilet seat? Like nobody wants that. You know what I mean? Okay. That will be fine for light. Um, maybe we can just rough it up a little bit. Uh, where did I get the rough stuff? I think it's in here, yeah. I'm gonna do some crack in in this one. Especially on the tile. Woo! Oh, that's Mowgli's insulin time. Oh my gosh, it scared me. <laughs> New fear unlocked sitting on a damp fuzzy toilet seat cover. <laughs> Yes, I am only here to make you think about, you know, horrible things that could happen to you, especially in bathrooms. Um, okay, so we do need to take a break so that I can give Mowgli his insulin. It is that time. It is insulin time. Um, I just can't stop doing this. I love doing the, like, ruining. I love ruining the bathrooms. This is a lot of fun for me. Ooh. Okay, that's good. Let me do a quick save. And then I'm just gonna do, be right back. I'm gonna try not take too long. I don't think it will take me too, too long to do his insulin. Um. All right, so I will be right, right back.
Okay. I am back. Um, oh my gosh, this was the first time. I actually pricked myself. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've never done that before, but like I didn't I didn't give myself any insulin, which is good because I'm pretty sure that that's quite dangerous. Uh, but I did prick myself. I there I there's a little blood, so I got myself some popcorn. Those soft plastic vinyl foam seat covers? What? They always had a tear in them? Oh, I kind of know what you're talking about. Hate those, especially when they had tears or cracks. Awful. The germs in those things, your grandmother had one. I think they were supposed to make, um, like, sitting more comfortable, but they definitely made it less comfortable. Just like imagining what what was going on. So, but yeah, he did a good job. He just um I didn't try to hide it from him. I've been trying to hide it from him the last few times. Uh, because he doesn't always notice. Uh, but he hears the lid when I take the lid off the needle. Uh, but he doesn't always notice because he can't always feel it. But today I decided to try and, like, let him sniff it first so that he knew it was coming. But, um, yeah. I ended up pricking myself. <laughs> it was unfortunate. Definitely need some floor cracks, I think. Just one. Just one is enough. They made your soul uncomfortable. Mo, be careful with those shots. That was the first time. I'm usually pretty good. That was the first time that I've done that. You definitely don't want to do that. It's not a good idea. It would have been bad, I think, if I had actually, like, given myself a dose. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I put a sword under the bed. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, it would have been bad if I had actually like given myself some, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Okay. Um, maybe we won't put this in here. Or here. We're gonna keep the curtains in these rooms nice. As if, like, as if, you know, these rooms are, like, nice, normal. You know what I mean? Uh... Hmm. You got popcorn too, Panda Girl. Me too. Yeah, you can definitely die from an insulin overdose. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it would not be good. I didn't actually sort of, that didn't cross my mind until I was watching a movie the other night. And I had heard about this before. It was like a nurse that would dose people with insulin to kill them. And that's when I was like, wait a second. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it can kill you. I should keep that in mind. It is a little bit scary, but um, I think it takes quite a, well, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't take, I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know how much it takes. I don't plan on taking any, <laughs> but um, I was nervous about that with my cat, of course, because e like, even if you need insulin, you don't want to take more than you need. So I did ask the vet. The vet um, called me on Thursday and asked, you know, how he was doing and if I had questions. And that was one of my questions was, do I need to worry that at some point his insulin might be too high of a dose? Because you're not checking. You're not checking your cat's insulin every day. Um, we just do spot tech checks every now and, and then. And he did say that it's possible, but not likely. So it's not really anything that I need to worry too much about. 
It's very, very rare that a cat that is diabetic will become non-diabetic. And his dose is like the min. His dose right now is still at like the minimum dosage that we would give. So he said that's not really like something that is likely to happen with the dose that I'm at. That it would ever be like too much for him. Because that was something I was afraid of. But then it crossed my mind that oh yeah, this is would be the same thing for people too. Um, and. There was a whole thing he taught me, which I hadn't realized. So I had told him, he told me that, and this is a pro tip for you, by the way, for your cat, if ever your cat needs insulin. He told me that next time I need um, more insulin, go to the human drugstore instead of the vet because the vet is insulin is way more expensive and cats take the exact same dosage and everything that humans take. So I told him, well, when they gave me the insulin, they also told me that I have to be careful about which, which syringes I get. So like, how do I know? Like, I'm nervous about the syringes. I don't want to get the wrong ones. How do I know if I'm getting the right ones? And he told me, well, here's a little history for you about insulin. So basically, Um, basically, uh, when insulin was first sort of, I guess, on the market, they would provide different like concentrations of it. There was like three or four different concentrations, but for every concentration, you needed a different size syringe. Learning so much on most stream. I know I'm full, full of random facts. These are all just things I learned this week too, or in the last few weeks. Um, yeah, so it used to be that there were several different concentrations and you would like pick your concentration. You would pick the size of your syringe based on the concentration. But sometimes people would get their insulin, get like a different concentration, and just like use their old syringes. And this was leading to people overdosing um, on their insulin unintentionally because with the different size syringes, they were accidentally giving themselves the wrong dose. And that was lethal in a lot of cases. So because this was happening about 50 years ago, they standardized everything and they were like, okay, we're only gonna sell um, insulin in the lowest concentration and then everyone can use the same syringe that will no longer be an issue um, and there won't be these overdoses anymore. But then what happened was uh, when veterinarians started realizing, oh, we can use this for dogs and cats. With cats, the dosages was the same as people and the, the syringes were the same for people. So that didn't really matter. But for dogs, they started wanting the, instead of the 100 milliliter like concentration or whatever, they wanted the 40 milliliter. I don't know exactly the measurement, so I could be wrong there. There's like 100 and there's a 40. So 40 is a more concentrated insulin. So for dogs, certain dogs, they need the higher concentration. So vets came and started asking for them to start manufacturing um, the higher concentration again. So when you go to your vet's office, you do need to make sure that you're getting the correct syringe with the correct um, insulin dosage. That's very important because some dogs need a higher concentration. But cats, they can use the exact same concentration that humans use. It will always be the most diluted form of insulin because cat doses are always so small. And so instead of paying what I paid for my insulin, next time when I need to get him more, I can go to the human pharmacy where it is actually much less expensive. So I think it's like $20 or something for a bottle and I paid 200. So it's like 10 times less expensive to go to a human pharmacy. And he said the syringes too will be less expensive. So there you go. So your vet is able, well, at least here in Canada, your vet is able to write you a prescription for that insulin so you can go to the pharmacy to get it for your cat instead of uh, using the one that they provide at the vet. 
So pro tip for you all. He told me that the first vet didn't tell me that. He just gave me uh, the insulin there, but that's totally fine. I didn't mind doing it that one time because I was so stressed. But um, grave robbing and insulin. Yeah, it was expensive for sure. So I think it's around $20 a bottle. I, I think when I looked it up, I think I could be wrong. But he also confirmed that it would be far less expensive that way. So, and I did pay $200, which is a lot. Um, and it does expire after four months. So the, uh, I think in the literature they gave me, it said to throw your insulin out after one month, but he said, you know, around four months, that's when you should replace it if he hasn't already gone through it all. So. I'm really lucky that my vet's like very, you know, <laughs> he was willing to kind of talk everything through with me and um, make sure that I kind of <laughs> was able to, if possible, just be a little bit more cost effective. So, so, but it's all good. All good. Mowgli's alive and that's what matters. I actually, in my memories, it came up the picture that I took of him. He like passed out on my bed and he was so tired. His face was right in the blanket um, after we got home from the vet that first night. And I remember how stressed and awful that evening was. <laughs> so I saw it and I was just so glad. And I've had a few moments that I've been like, modern medicine is absolutely amazing. Like without insulin, my cat wouldn't be able to be alive. He would not have survived. He would be dead. He would not be able to, he wouldn't be here anymore. But thanks to insulin, <laughs> thanks to this one single medication, he can live a perfectly happy, normal life. And he probably has many years left now, which I'm so grateful for. And I was just like, there have been moments where I've like stopped whatever I'm doing and re realized that and really like, it's really sunk in that, you know, I'm, I might only have one cat right now and not two. And, but thanks to insulin, this like amazing medicine, he's here, he's doing well, and he's living a very happy, normal life. So now this is where definitely the cobwebs would be. They would all be up here, I think. So we should probably put a lot of those up there. But yeah, anyways, those are my random thoughts. But I definitely appreciate that. Like in a new way. I've always appreciated it. I've always thought how amazing insulin is specifically because it is a lot. It saves, you know, thousands of lives, probably more than thousands of lives every single day. But um, I'm even more appreciative now that it's like um, keeping my cat alive now every single day. But yeah, those are my random thoughts. In the past, that wouldn't have been an option, which is, you know, so sad. It's keeping your kitty alive and comfortable. Yeah, he's perfectly like, he does have to do the two little pricks a day, which he doesn't enjoy. But other than that, he's living like a perfectly normal life. He's just as happy as he ever was. He can do anything. Like it it has not changed anything in his life. Like he's just like he was before. Before his body stopped being able to, to handle. Um, He's not just alive for the sake of being alive, he's happy. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much, Steph. Yeah, exactly. He's happy, he's living a good life. He's doing well. He's, he can feel good. He can feel just like anyone that is able to process sugar. So, and you know, it's not just cats that this drug saves, it saves people's lives, it saves people of all ages. It just gives them an opportunity to 
live a nice, comfortable life. So yeah, it's very true as well. I just like, I can't get over it sometimes. I'd still get like, just amazed by it. <laughs> And the fact that it's now been, I guess, it was October 1st that this all started. So we gave him his first dose, um, or I guess it was September 30th, I think, that we gave him his first dose. And it's it's only been a month, but I'm still just as amazed now as I was like a month ago. So that hasn't that hasn't changed for me at all. I'm still just like so amazed and grateful. Okay. All right. Things are looking pretty damaged. That's good. My popcorn is delicious. Also good. All right. I do think that even if we don't get done, I do think I'm going to end the stream in 10 minutes just to make sure I have the time to get to bed a good hour and so that I'm not too tired tomorrow. One thing I've had as like that's been challenging since I've been off is sleep. And I know this might sound strange, but I get very um, anxious when I'm not working. Um, like even though like rest is a human right, never forget it. <laughs> Everybody has the right to rest. Um, I, uh, I can get quite anxious when I'm, when I'm not working and, um, and so I think I was feeling, I was feeling that a little bit this week and, um, it did make it hard for me to sleep. So, um, so I haven't been sleeping very well. So I do want to try to make sure I get, um, to bed a little bit earlier if I can today. Um, and give myself a little bit of a chance to be well rested for my first work day tomorrow. But we're going to be back to all our our normal scre streaming schedule this week. So we may finish the haunted house. Um, on our next stream, I think. The gravel kicking in it is. I can tell that I'm like trying not to be too groggy with my words. I feel a little bit like, ooh. <laughs> but. I do hope it kicks in too so that I can sleep tonight. Um, I don't know. I go through these waves. Like I've never was someone that suffered with insomnia ever. I was always very good at sleeping. It's just been really since the pandemic, I think. I've had, I, I think I went through a phase in university too where I had a hard time sleeping. I don't know if I had a hard time sleeping or if I was scared to sleep because I was having really bad nightmares, I remember. And I didn't want to sleep, I think. So I would stop myself from falling asleep because I was too afraid to dream. Um, that wasn't that wasn't a fun time. I do remember that. Um, and like telling my mom that I was scared to sleep and stuff. Uh, but that didn't last too long. That was like a couple weeks. All right, I do feel we should put some of these full-size portraits somewhere but I don't know that we really have the right place for them. Maybe we should put one right at the front. Uh, you took a caffeine pill this afternoon so you'll never sleep. <laughs> Aw. Were you able to rest over the weekend? I know you said you watched some movies. Do you have more movies to watch? Because technically your anniversary is tomorrow. Are you doing anything special tomorrow? I don't know if you still have anything special planned. I do want like a big mirror down here. Like that. Yeah, it would be great if I could get the mirror to be like cracked and stuff, but it's not an option. Your sisters use those and you took one once and proceeded to take a three hour nap all step. You're going to your dad's for Halloween. That'll be fun. 
I'm super excited because I think there's only one year since I've lived on my own that I lived at a cat house where kids trick-or-treated in. And I think that only like two kids came to the door when I lived there. And I was so excited. Like I got the candy and everything and no kids came. So I'm hoping kids come tomorrow. I do worry that I don't have enough candy, but I also don't want to have too much because then I'll just end up eating it. And um, I do want to be, <laughs> I love candy, so I have to be careful. <laughs> I love chocolate. I don't love candy. I love chocolate. And I do have a lot of chocolate. So I do need to be careful if I end up with, with all the chocolates. <laughs> they won't last long. Not with me. Maybe it can kind of look like somebody, like, is there actually just straight up graffiti? I wouldn't mind if it looked like there was graffiti on the wall. And should I put this creepy clown painting somewhere? Maybe I can put it in the bathroom. Mo, that's so sad, no one came. Yeah, only like two kids came, I remember. I gave one of the kids so much candy, like, it was towards the end of the night and she was very, very young, like like a toddler age or something. I gave her all the candy <laughs> that I had left and she gave me a hug, it was so cute. One year you wanna pass out full-size candy bars but you live in a neighborhood with lots of kids. Yeah. And you know, like I remember being a kid and going trick-or-treating and when somebody did the full-size candy bars, Word got around, like people would say, don't like make sure that you go to this house. They have the full size like Kit Kat bars or whatever. Like they would tell, like we would talk about it, where the best houses were to go or houses that scared you too. Um, because some houses did, they would try to scare you. So, but yeah, if you start doing those full size candy bars, everyone finds out and then everyone wants to stop by that house. Oh, maybe we can put this nice like sunflower photo in here. Somewhere. Oh. So, but yeah, I would love to do that as well. But yeah, you have to be prepared because word gets around and then people come. The people come, they flock to your house. I'm just gonna put two of those, no one will notice. No one will notice that it's two of the same thing, right? Um, maybe we can put the butterflies in here. Um, put that up there. Those just look like plans or something. So I don't think we will use those. So by the way, I am still a little bit behind on editing Cry Baby Whim. So I did put the cut version of episode two. I did it kind of quick because I'm trying to catch up with myself. So um, I still have to do episodes three and four. Like I still have to cut them. Episode two is now up. So you can watch that if you want. And I will catch up with the other ones. There's also the full VODs. Those I was able to keep up with. Those are all on YouTube. So you can watch the full ones. Or you can watch them on Twitch too. Whatever your preference is. If you're trying to keep up with that challenge. Um, they're all available. Thank you so much Omega for that. Um, so. But I will make sure to catch, those, catch up on those as quickly as I can. I want to try and get the other two out this week. And then. So that. We'll do episode five on Thursday, and then hopefully I can get, um, I can cut that for the week after. So I'm gonna do my best to stay on top of those. It's It takes me a long time because I'm new to editing, but I do think like I, even as I was doing episode two, I was getting better. I did make some, like there's some things that I don't like, and there's a couple of mistakes that I didn't um, fix or anything. I, I am aware of that. <laughs> I am aware that there's like some some weird like little mistakes that I made and stuff. Um, but 
I was, I wanted to get it out to try and um, just make sure I didn't get too far behind. So it's not maybe as well done as some of the other episodes. Or, well, I've only done one other episode. It's not maybe as well done as the first, <laughs> which I was aware of. And I, I made that, it was a bit of a tough choice. Like, do I just upload it this way or do I go back and I like refine it? I'm learning a few things. I learned how to zoom in. Um, I learned how to zoom in this time. So you'll notice there's a couple of points where I zoom in. Um, so as I learn, I will get faster, I'm sure. But I am very much new. Very, very new to all of it. Oh, right. This doll. Maybe we should put this doll in here. So this doll is supposed to, I think, keep you from being scared. So maybe this daughter could see this baby after this. Maybe this baby passed away first and the daughter was still seeing the baby and would play with her and the parents thought, thought something was wrong with her. So they bought her this doll. Um, hello, Dahlia. Need therapy? You can tell Dahlia anything. Talking to Dahlia will soothe and decrease fear. So let it all out. She's here for you. So maybe the parents bought her that to help her with um, the baby's passing. And maybe they kind of noticed she would go into that room and talk and they didn't really know who she was talking to. And they thought she was upset. So they bought um, they bought her a Dahlia. And then, um, and then something happened to the whole family. Oh, there's more dolls. Oh, but these aren't the Victorian ones. I like the Victorian ones. So I think that's, that's why that doll is in there. Then something happened to the rest of the family too. And uh, and now the whole house is haunted with, or maybe it's just haunted with both the kids. So, yeah, I think that makes sense. And I put the goo where there's like hauntings happening. So there, it's pre-gooed. That usually only comes like, I think as you play. Debug, rope toy. All right, well, I think this is where I'm gonna leave it. So we've made more progress. It's it's not done yet though. Uh, we definitely still wanna do our landscaping, I think. Um, but I do think this is where I am going to leave it. Oh no, did I lose my roof up there? Oh no, I didn't, there it is. Um, this is where we're gonna leave it. We will finish the haunted house at some point. Maybe we'll do it on, on Tuesday. Um, or, or is Tuesday Sims 2? Maybe we'll do Sims 2 on the weekend this time and we can finish the haunted house on Tuesday and then Thursday we will do our crybaby whims challenge and um, and then we will do Sims 2 on Sunday. So I think that will be our plan for the week. But I will end things here. So thank you everybody for hanging out with me. 